Can you imagine just standing before the king? Oh, I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine. Can only imagine. I could only imagine to be surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in Word of God tells us for we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father we too might walk in the newness of life But our commonwealth is in heaven. And from it we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body. And he will change us in the twinkling of an eye. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be is made for I am your God I will strengthen you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future any other powers neither height nor death nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled cause if you believe in God 
believe also in me. In my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am, ye may be also. Thomas reminds us that the Lord is close to the broken heart. And he saves those who are crushed in their spirit. Jesus also reminds us that blessed are those who mourn for they shall, they will be comforted. Bible says, brothers and sisters, I will show you a mystery. We do not want to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that we do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope we believe that Jesus died and rose again. So we believe that God will bring with Jesus those whom have fallen asleep. For we know that if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have building from God an eternal house in heaven not built by man's hand for if we live we live to the Lord and if we die we die to the Lord. So then whether we live, whether we die, we are the Lord's. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they Follow me. Jesus says, I give them eternal life. And they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Because my Father who has given them to me, is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. You may be seated in the house in the presence of God. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we come on this day celebrating the life of our dear sister Gloria Wilson and we're going to turn the program over to our program guide at this time, Miss Ida Berry. Good morning. Celebration of life, Sister Gloria Wilson, 
Sunrise, March 5th, 1943. Sunset, February 27, 2023. Friday, March 3rd, 2023, at 11 a.m., New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, 140 West Maple Street, Jackson, Mississippi, 39203, Reverend Willie Tobias officiated. Order of service. I've already been acknowledged as being the program guide. We will follow the program as printed. Processional, ministers and friends. Scripture reading and prayer, Reverend Herbert Broom. Selection, New Mount Zion Choir, God Is. Words of encouragement, Floyd Steverson, pastor of Grace Church, Pearl, Mississippi. Expressions, two minutes, please. Sister Emma Spiver, president of the Deaconess Ministry, uh, ministry. and then we will have friends to come. Under the expression, we will have family members only. After Sister Spiva, we will have friends to come and make their remarks. Please remember, two minutes as the family has requested. Selection, New Mount Zion Choir, total praise. Tribute, cards, and acknowledgement, Sister Ida Berry, yours truly. Obituary, soft music, read silently. Eulogy, Reverend Willie Tobias. This complete the order of service. I will be back after a short interval. First, I'd like to acknowledge that I am deeply in gratitude and grateful that the family will allow me to help participate in this homegoing celebration for our beloved sister in Christ. Being that this is my sister's final physical presence here at New Mount Zion, but she's always been a faithful member. I could imagine she quoting this scripture of comfort to her family and her friends. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leading me beside still waters. He restored my soul. He leading me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I have walked through the valleys of shadows of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Yes. Yes, Thou anointed my head with oil. Right. My cup runneth over. Yes. Surely, goodness and mercy yes. shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes. You find that passage of scripture in the 23rd number of Psalms. From the New Testament, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Let us pray.
to Jehovah God, our Father, the Father of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the Father of Gloria Wilson. We come now humbly thanking you, dear Heavenly Father, for we, we pray out of love, a love for our dear sister, a love for our dear wife, a love for our mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, friends and relatives. We come now, dear Heavenly Father, thanking you for all the blessings that you have stored upon us. Realizing that 1943, almost 79 years ago, almost 80, on this very day, of a Friday. The Lord blessed this world with the birth of our beloved sister. For she came from the earth and it's so fitting that this day she will return. We thank you Lord for this family. We thank you Father God for the love of her husband and all of her children and all of our that are around her. For we all will remember her and her great smile, her cheerfulness, her willing to serve others, whether in food programs or other ministry throughout this city, realizing that this is the day and the month of making history for women. We want to thank you, Father God, for the history that this, this sister made on this planet. For this church and all its members. Father God, we pray that the family be strong in a mighty way. We pray for comfort and strength. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, for unity and we pray for love dear father god for for you so loved the world that you gave your son for us we thank you lord and father god we pray that the message of the eulogy that our pastor will preach your word that you're going to give him the message we pray that our ears be tuned in to the message of encouraging words throughout this day. We pray, Father God, that we love each other in a special way. Father God, we know that our beloved sister is in the presence of a reunion far beyond the one that we are celebrating here because She's in the heaven. And we thank you, Father God, for allowing us the time that she spent with us. We pray now, Father God, that the day will come that we all will stand before you. And we pray, Father God, that you would like you did with my sister Gloria. Say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come home and take your rest forevermore. We do pray this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And all of God's children say, Amen, Amen.
family and these friends who are grieving and hurting and I believe if there's any hope if there's any comfort if there's any peace to be found it is in God's holy word and we look to God's word at this time you know Reverend Broom shared with us just a few moments ago from Psalm 23 that the Lord is my shepherd and that David took comfort in knowing that God was by his side he went into the New Testament and he Gave us the words of Jesus. He said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that whoever should believe in him will have everlasting life. I believe there's comfort and encouragement and peace to be found in God's word. In John 14, chapter 1, Jesus said these words. He gave us the secret to comfort and peace and being encouraged. He said, your heart must not be troubled. That's right. yeah. Believe in God, uh -huh. believe also in me. Right. right there in the scripture, we find the secret to comfort yeah. and encouragement and peace through any circumstance, uh -huh. through any situation. He said, in my father's house are many dwelling places. If oh, not, I would have told you. I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come back. 
and receive you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. The hope of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, I, I regret that I didn't get to know Miss Gloria more than I did. I come to know her in the last year and uh, got to meet her a few times and visit with her. But there were several things that were obvious about her when you met her and you talked with her. She had a sweet and kind spirit about her. Amen. And it was always a pleasure to talk to her. But the other thing that stood out the most to me about her was it was obvious that this was a woman who knew the Lord. She knew him personally. She knew him as her Lord. She knew him as her Savior. And when she faced sickness and impending death, she faced it with confidence in the Lord because she trusted in God and she knew the one who had given her eternal life. Now, family, I want to tell you today, if the only hope we have is the hope of this world, then we, we're the most miserable of all people. But we have more than a hope in this world. This thing that we call death is not the end. It's merely the beginning. This transition that we call death is, is not the end. It's the doorway that enters into the eternal life. You see, to the world, what happened the other morning, or late that night, I should say, was that Miss Gloria took a last breath and she died. But in reality for the Christian, what happened late that night was that when she took her last earthly breath, she woke up immediately in the presence of the one who had died to save her. We take comfort in that today because we know that this goodbye we're saying today is not forever. It's not permanent. The Bible says that there's coming a day when Jesus Christ will return and even the dead in Christ will rise. And those of us alive and well will join together with him in the air. And together we will always be with the Lord. There's coming a homecoming day. One day when you'll see your mother again. You'll see your wife again, Mr. Wilson. Your grandmother your sister, your, your loved one. We're going to see her again because of what Jesus did for us. And because of that, we have hope. And we're encouraged and we're strengthened. The Apostle Paul said that we don't grieve like those who have no hope. That doesn't mean that your grief isn't real. Your grief is real and it's here and it's evident and your hearts are heavy. But we don't grieve like those who have no hope. Because we know that through Jesus Christ we have the promise of eternal life and because of that we can be encouraged we can be strengthened we can be at peace and we can take comfort in the promise from God of eternal life let me pray for you family father I come to you this morning and I thank you for your words your words of hope your words of peace your words of comfort words that strengthen us Lord we're thankful that we have a hope in you that that extends far beyond this present life. We're thankful, Lord, that we have an eternity with you because of what you did on the cross for us. And Father, I pray that this family would grasp hold of that hope of eternal life. Father, I pray that you would let your love for them be known in such a, a, a strong way today, that your peace and your comfort would envelop them and wrap them in your care. Holy Spirit, minister to them. Give them the strength to stand and the peace to carry on. We thank you for a life well lived, a life that knew you. We thank you that Miss Gloria is with you right now. And we trust in your word that someday we'll be with her again. Lord, we give you the honor and the glory. And we just want to say thank you in Jesus' name.
you all excuse me, I'm playing two roles today. <laughs> but um, I mentioned that we would follow the program as printed. So the next person that's up will have expression by the family. Two minutes, please. Good morning, church. I want to try to get through this. I figured as her daughter-in-law and fellow deaconess and a member of New Mount Zion, I'd be remiss if I didn't get up here and say something about my mother-in-law to tell you what she meant to us. Um, it all started when the Wilson family joined New Mount Zion in 1992. I didn't know the family that well, but I'd had casual conversations with the girls in passing. Well, fast forward, I got to know them pretty well once Rick and I started dating. And as we got to know one another, he casually mentioned one day that his mother was Mexican. And of course, my initial reaction was, yeah, right. <laughs> but then I heard his mother speak in church, and there was no mistaking, she was indeed a Mexican lady. <laughs> But more importantly, she was a Christian lady. Gloria Sanchez Ramirez Wilson was a woman of God. And as I thought about what I wanted to convey about this great woman, one scripture stood out and came to mind. Proverbs 31, 10 through 12 reads, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do good to him and no evil all the days of her life. Ma, as I called her, was a virtuous woman. She dedicated her entire life to please God and to care for her children and grandchildren. What was most important to her was knowing that people she loved were happy, healthy, and well taken care of. She often sacrificed her personal happiness to ensure that her children and grandchildren would succeed in whatever endeavor or challenge they faced. In all the years that I knew her, I never even heard her raise her voice. The love she gave to everyone will be remembered for years. She also had a servant's heart. She may have been small in stature, but her heart was big, and her love for people even bigger. She would give you the clothes off of her back, and her last dime to a complete stranger. She didn't have a lot of means, but she was rich with love. She loved serving on the hospitality committee, cooking and serving food to others. She also enjoyed helping Reverend Broom, as he mentioned, with his food program ministry. And lastly, if you knew her, you know her hands were rarely still. She was always doing something at home, cooking, cleaning, washing, or doing the things that she most enjoyed, planting flowers or reading God's word. She had the joy of the Lord inside of her, and that joy was her strength. Even during the time of her illness, she managed to still joke, laugh, and smile. So I want to say to her, to the world, thank you for showing the family what it really means to be a Christian to the very end. Thank you for pouring into my life and countless others with your words of encouragement, exemplifying strength that only comes from the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the love and support you gave freely to all who knew you. We will forever love and miss you until we see you again. Rest well, Ma. Amen.
you know, as I was sitting there, a little boy said, it's time for you to get up. This is a celebration of life. And I want you to, the family, I want you to take a look at each other. Just, just, just look at each other. You can see Sister Gloria in all of you all. So remember the smile that she had on her face. Think about the good things that she's done in your life. How she molded you into who you are today. So whatever she instilled in you, instill it in the rest of the world. And I know the world will be a better place. Now, let's smile some and be grateful we had her as long as God allowed us to have. to Pastor Tobias, other ministers, and especially to the bereaved family and friends. I feel immensely blessed to have been asked to make tribute in honor and recognition to our beloved deaconess Sister Gloria Wilson. It would be impossible to describe her without using the words love, compassion, and faithfulness. Sister Wilson loved God with her entire being, her family to the highest, her pastor, her church congregation, and everyone she met with words and action. Yes, she loved her neighbor as herself. In compassion, she exemplified the spiritual character trait in Luke 6.31 do to others as you would have them do to you. She offered a positive outlook on life as a means of encouragement to others. And she did it all with kindness and a smile. Faithfulness. Sister Wilson commendably served in the deaconess ministry at New Mount Zion and the Jackson District, always exemplifying the call of duty and going beyond. She also participated in the Sunday school, Bible class, and other activities of the church. She stood as a role model for all and was truly a woman of God. And so, in honor of Sister Gloria Wilson, this poem by Helen Steiner Rice is dedicated to the family. There is no night without a dawning, no winter without a spring, and beyond death's dark horizon, our hearts once more were seen. For those who leave us for a while have only gone away out of a restless, careworn world into a brighter day, for there will be no pardons, and time is not counted by years. 
where there are no trials, no troubles, no worries, no cares, and no tears. Thank you. said I may need this to put on here. Yeah. <sighs> Man, this is this is a little bit more difficult than I thought. I had prepared something, but I don't even know if I can even read it, but I'll try. I haven't known Miss Gloria Wilson as long as majority of you guys. But in this short time, more importantly, I know her spirit. And it was a benevolent spirit. She's as beautiful as the word beautiful. You know, and what she gave to us was a great gift. You see, it was a, it was a gift more than, than a physical gift. You see, <laughs> You can squander money. You can destroy homes and property. But what she gave us, what we inherited from her, could not be damaged, could not be destroyed, could not be lost. It's permanent. You know, and it, and, and, and it keeps us, and it keeps us and it keeps her from just being a fond memory to us. It allows us in so many ways to see her as alive. And she is alive within all of us. You know? And I understand, you know, there may be times when in our lives when the situation arises and we want to talk to her. We want to ask her just what we should do in hope that when those times comes, we can begin to look at each other and we can begin to find that part in us that she gave to us. You know, maybe we can learn to lean on each other a little bit more. You know, look at each other and say, I want to lean on you like I can lean on Ms. Wilson. I want to be able to rely on each other like we could rely on Ms. Wilson. You know, maybe then she won't seem so far away. So I'd like to say for you, Ms. Ms. Wilson, for your wisdom, your humor, your tenderness, your compassion, and your understanding, but most of all, your patience, your patience with all of us, you know. You, we, we loved you, and when God created you, he broke the mold. And as she once said, <laughs> you know, when, when she was a baby, you know, said, El Nina es muy bonita. The Lord had to say that the child is beautiful. So thank you for allowing me to speak. Amen. Amen to that. What's going on, everybody? All right, all right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's, let's get a little more laughing, a little more smiling for my grandma. My grandma was one of the happiest people on this earth, a servant, 
we not finna sit in here sad. She don't, y'all know she don't want that. Till her last day in that hospital, my grandma held my hand, my grandma still had a smile on her face. She still had joy in her heart. She don't want to sit around here crying and all that. We're not, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. My name is Cameron Wilson. Glory was my grandmother. Michael is my father, her son. And I just had to speak on the servant that my grandmother was. There was never a time when I came in and she didn't have a, a smile on her face, a warm hug for me, or something to eat, or something like that. <laughs> to, my, to my cousins, Kedri, everybody, Chase, everybody in here. There was never a time when we came in, we didn't have some orange Gatorade to drink. <laughs> we didn't have some type of biscuits or something to eat. And I promise, I told her in the hospital when we was here last week, I said, Grandma, if I could just get one more of your lemon lime cakes one more time, I'd be happy. But hey, that's fine. I, I had everything. She gave me everything I need. The other day, when, the other day, it touched my heart when when I called me and said she passed. I said, I can't even be mad. She was such a servant, such a loving person on this earth. I couldn't. Even, I couldn't. Even, I, I wouldn't even want her to sit in that hospital, going in and out that hospital every day. Sitting there, nobody want to sit in the hospital. Nobody want to sit there sad. She served too hard in this world. I can't even be mad. I can't even be mad. All the time she gave us, all the love that she gave us. Amen. It stuck in my heart, hit me so hard, I can't even be sad. Wow. Like, there's no way even in death, I could still look right there and I can't even be sad. Wow. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm just proud to have been loved by such a servant of God. That, that real, that real deal love everybody. I'm talking about, it's people I didn't even know that knew my grandmother. Like, oh yeah, she, she served me here in the cafeteria, this and this and that, random people. Just by you serving and having a loving heart, how you touch people on this earth. And I, I just pray, I've been praying every day, especially since I found out she was sick, that she just, that you work on my heart that I could be a servant the way she was. That I could have a woman and a wife in my life that could serve me every day with the love that she has and the compassion that she had. There's nobody else that I could think that was more sweet than my grandmother, no matter the situation, no matter what was going on, no, everything that was going on, even when she's laying in that house, but she's still smiling. It take a lot to do that. Everybody can't do that. Everybody can't sit here and smile through their struggle and, and to their entire family hold up everybody, hug everybody every single time they come in the house, no matter what. So I just wanted to say a couple words. I couldn't sit there in my seat. It's been on my heart for a long time. Now I can speak and remind everyone the loving lady that she was and how we need to love everybody around this earth. Because if everybody was like my grandma, this world would be an amazing place. <laughs> So everybody remember that. Remember how much our, our grandmother loved us, our mother loved us, our sister loved us. Like, incredible, incredible woman of God. And she showed me exactly what a servant and a loving person is supposed to be like. So grandma, I thank you.
tribute cards and acknowledgments. To my wife, you are an amazing mother and wife, a woman who insisted on living a peaceful life of love and forgiveness, and who taught me the importance of exhibiting these values. I will cherish you forever, and you will forever be in my heart and my thoughts. You may be gone, but I will see you again one day. I will always love you, my wife and best friend, your husband. To our mother, Mama, you were and will always be a great inspiration to us and others. You gave your best in everything and shared your life so willingly with all who came to know you. The joy you brought us will never end, and one day we will be together again. Though we miss you, we know that you are with Jesus and those who have gone before you. Thank you for everything, Mama. We love you and will do our best to honor you in our words and action, your children. with prayers for strength and healing. God is the strength of my heart and the portion forever. May God give you strength for each new day and show you his love in his sweet, tender way with constant reminders for comfort and cheer that moment by moment he'll always be near. Sister Elaine Levy and family. From both of us at this time of sorrow, if words could express what is truly felt in our heart, you would know how sorry we are and how much love we send to you today. May God bless and keep you as he has all of these days. Love from Reverend Curtis Schaefer. May God hold you close, comfort you gently, and carry you through in prayer and sympathy, Sister Kathy Schaefer. Words cannot express all the heart longs to say. So sorry for your loss. I remember Miss Wilson Fondly. She had such a kind spirit. May it comfort you to know you're surrounded by love with sympathy, love, and blessing, Dr. Sonia. With love in our hearts, we release them into the arms of heaven. Deacon Ricardo Wilson, thinking of you now and wishing you comfort and peace, knowing the light of such a beautiful spirit shines on in our memories, keeping you and family in my prayers, Sister Doris Powell. So sorry for, for your loss. Deacon Samuel Wilson, in this difficult time, may peace and love surround you. May God's choice blessing, his comfort and peace be yours today and always. Sister Doris Powell. God promise, a life lived in him never end. May you find comfort in God's promise of eternal life knowing your loved one lives and loves you still. Deacon Willie Bell Scott, Deacon Esther McCoy, Communion Com Ministry, we are keeping you in our thoughts and prayers. In deepest sympathy, wishing you peace and comfort at this most difficult time 
your sister in Christ, love Sister Laverne Chen. With sympathy. Grieving give us time to heal. We comfort each other more closely. By sharing our fond remembrance together, the sorrow will lessen. Our treasured thoughts will forever remain. Let the beauty of each new day nourish your soul and bring you peace. Love you guys, Sister Laverne Chen. To the family and friends of Sister Gloria Wilson, another brave soldier has gone home to rest. Miss Gloria Wilson and her family are pillars of the community. Her kind ways and smiling face will be missed. Our thoughts and prayers are with the bereaved family and friends. We love her, but God loves her best. May God bless you and keep you in the days and months ahead. In honor of the life and memory of our beloved, it is hereby declared Mrs. Gloria Wilson's day in Ward 3, City of Jackson, State of Mississippi, Kenneth I. Stokes and family. Eddie Fair, tax collector. Resolution in love and memory of Sister Gloria Wilson. The Hines County Tax Collector's Office would like to express our heartfelt sympathy in the loss of your dearly beloved. We will continue in prayer that God will console your hearts and ease your pain in this time of grief. That the wisdom that Gloria Wilson shared with family and friends throughout her time on earth guide you in love and wisdom. Family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but find comfort in knowing Gloria Wilson is resting peaceably in the arms of Jesus, humbly submitted on this fourth day of March in the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2023. the House of Representatives. The Speaker of the House and Representative William R. Bo Brown hereby extend their deepest sympathy to the family of Mrs. Gloria Wilson, who departed this earthly life on Monday, February the 27, 2023, to enter into eternal rest with her Heavenly Father, causing great sorrow and loss to her family and friends. Mrs. Wilson was a dedicated wife, mother, and church member who was in church every Sunday. She was known for her pleasing personality. The legacy of her memory will continue to have a profound impact upon the lives of her family and friends. This community has indeed lost an outstanding citizen. Philip Gunn, Speaker, House of Representatives, Reverend, I'm, I'm sorry, Representative uh, William Bo Brown, House of Representative, District 70. Acknowledgement from the family. Perhaps you sent a lovely card or sat quietly in a chair. Perhaps you sent a funeral spray. If so, we saw it there. Perhaps you spoke the kindest words as any friend could say. Perhaps you were not there at all, just thought of us that day. Whatever you did to console our hearts, we thank you so very much, whatever the part. And I hope that I have lived up to the family's expectation of being the program guide. I love you guys, and may God bless you.
Can you imagine? Can you imagine just standing before the king? Oh, I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine. Before me, I can only imagine. I can only imagine to be surrounded by your glory. What will my heart of the glory of your soul? Better than that, such a jewel. So one of an individual that God has blessed the body of Christ with, my God from Zion. Thank God for her life, her legacy, and the love of Sister Gloria Wilson. After, after hearing, after hearing all of those kind words and loving words that have been shared we can all agree to the fact that she exemplified Christ-like character amen, amen somebody amen. she exemplified Christ-like character even much like Jesus did when she was at the point of death I remember if not the last time I visit her next to the last time I visit her she said to me Reverend all is well. And that, that, that stuck with me because that let me know that she knew something. I, I believe that she knew that God had made her a promise. I believe that's what she knew. I believe she knew that God made her a promise and I base that ladies and gentlemen on uh, John chapter 11 verse 25 and verse 26 when Jesus said this I am the resurrection I am the life he that believeth in me though he were dead Jesus said yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this for a few moments for for about ten minutes. I want to I want to take this text and talk about he made her a promise. <laughs> My God from Zion, he made her a promise. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I have discovered that there are thousands of promises that are listed in the Word of God. When you read the Bible, when you study the Bible, when you survey Scripture, you will discover, and I declare, that there are many promises found in the Holy Bible. There are promises concerning God's persons. There are promises concerning God's power there's promises concerning God's pardon and there are even promises listed in the word of God concerning the presence of God ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters you know what a promise is don't you a promise is a declaration or assurance that one will do a particular thing or that a particular thing will happen or take place one thing about a promise is the mere fact that a promise comes with responsibility talk to me if you can and when a promise is made ladies and gentlemen when a promise is made to someone they have a responsibility to make good on that promise have I got a witness here they have a responsibility to fulfill that promise because I come to tell you 
this Friday afternoon that we are not to make promises that we cannot keep. Come on, help me preach if you will, Lord Danae. We, we are not to make promises that we won't fulfill. I ain't want to tell you that when a promise is made, that promise must be kept. And I stop by to tell somebody on my way to heaven that God will not make a promise that he will not keep. I need to bless somebody on the day. God, God will never make a promise that he will not keep. And that's what we discover in this text on today. In this text, you will discover that Jesus makes a promise to Martha, who is the sister of Lazarus. Read it when you get a chance. In John chapter 11, you will discover the Bible will show you that Lazarus had died. And the same promise that Jesus makes to Martha is the same promise that Jesus made to Gloria Wilson. Help me preach if you will along the day. The same promise that Jesus made to Martha, it is the same promise that he makes to all men who believe in him. Jesus tells Martha in John chapter 11 that even though her brother is dead, Jesus makes her a promise that she will see him and he will rise again. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus makes a promise that Lazarus would experience a resurrection. And the same promise that he made to Martha is the same promise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ made to Gloria Wilson. I come to tell you in these few minutes this Friday afternoon that he made her a promise. Notice if you will, ladies and gentlemen, notice if you will the statement of the promise. Jesus makes a promise as it relates to Lazarus that he will rise again, that he will experience a resurrection. How could Jesus make this promise? I'm glad you asked me this Friday. Jesus says uh, that Lazarus is going to live again. Lazarus uh, is going to rise again. Lazarus uh, is going to experience a resurrection. And Jesus makes this statement a promise because Jesus says uh, the reason Lazarus Lazarus is going to experience a resurrection is because Jesus says I am. Good God Almighty, Jesus says I am the resurrection and the life. Because I come to tell you, I, I discovered Pastor Stevenson that, that, that the problem with Martha was Martha was looking at an event, but Jesus was causing her to look at an individual. Talk to me somebody. Martha problem. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus changed her focus from an event to an individual. And Jesus says the reason I know that Lazarus is going to rise again. The reason I know that Lazarus is going to experience a resurrection. The reason I know that Sister Gloria Wilson is going to experience a resurrection is because Jesus makes this statement that I am the resurrection. And somebody in here this Friday morning, afternoon, know that not only is Jesus the resurrection, but somebody knows that Jesus is the omnipotent God. Can I help somebody this afternoon? Not only is he the omnipotent God, he has all power and command over death. His power is unparalleled. The power of God is unsurpassed. That's why John says in chapter 1 verse 4, if my mind serves me correctly, John said that in him was a life and the life was the light of me and Jesus is not only life but bestows life upon the believer who makes this statement of promise. Not only will I go so far as to say uh, that, 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 that he made her a promise and, and the Bible shows us this statement of promise, but this is where I got excited, ladies and gentlemen. Not only does the Bible show us the statement of promise, but it also shows us the source of the promise. Good God Almighty. I like what Jesus says. He gives this statement as it relates to the promise, but he also reminds Martha that he is the source of the promise. That's why Jesus says, he that believeth in me. 
Notice, if you will, ladies and gentlemen, he did not say, he that believeth on me, but he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whosoever lives and believeth in me shall never die. And I know we are had a funeral home today, but I just wish I had somebody who was not ashamed to testify that you believe in Jesus. I'm almost done this Friday. Anybody here not ashamed to testify that you believe in Jesus? And Jesus says that whosoever lives and believeth in me shall never die. And I'm done. I'm done this Friday afternoon when I tell you. And anyone who trusts in Jesus Christ for salvation is going to live again. Y'all forgive me. I done messed around and got happy. Oh, I come to tell you, any man, woman, boy, or girl who believes in Jesus Christ, believes that he was wounded for your transgression, believe that he was bruised for your iniquities, believe that he hung on an old rugged cross, I come to tell you, if you believe in Jesus, you shall live again. Because the Bible says that Jesus is the source of the problem. And I like what Pastor Stevenson said. And I'm going to add to what Pastor said because somebody here knows that life doesn't end at the grave. Come on, help me preach here this Friday. Somebody here knows that life does not end at the grave. Matter of fact, life doesn't end at the funeral. Life does not end at the cemetery or at Garden Memorial. Matter of fact, Sister Gloria Wilson, her life really didn't end a few days ago because in the presence of God, she's more alive right now than ever, than ever before. And this promise that is made, ladies and gentlemen, I come to tell you, the promise that Jesus made really didn't come from a theology book. This, this promise that we speak of today didn't come from a history book. It didn't come from John who wrote the book. But I come to tell you, and I'm done this Friday afternoon, the source of this promise came from Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God. And the shout on the day, I'm done. The shout on the day is that though we die physically, we will live forever spiritually. God forgive me, I done got happy here. I know there's a homegoing celebration, but when you have a relationship with the Lord, there is something about being in the presence of the Almighty God. And if Sister Wilson was given an opportunity, I come to tell you, she wouldn't come back right here. She wouldn't come back to this church. She wouldn't go back to her house because being in the presence of the Lord is the greatest experience on earth. That's why, that's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible says, if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Can I tell you what the Bible says? The Bible says, and if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is in vain. If Christ be not risen, your singing is in vain. If Christ didn't resurrect from the dead, your worship is in vain. Your faith is in vain. But the reason I know that there's going to be a resurrection one of these old days because Jesus, the Son of God, was resurrected from the dead. That's why, that's why the old preacher would tell you he died one Friday. That's why the old preacher would tell you he stayed in the grave Friday night. That's why the old preacher would tell you that he stayed in the grave all Saturday night. But the shout this Friday afternoon is that early Sunday morning. And one of these old days, 
sister Nielsen uh, oh, will rise again. And uh, when she is resurrected, uh, the Bible says uh, uh, she will have uh, a new body. And uh, the reason she's going to have a new body uh, is because uh, uh, she needs a new body uh, in her new home. Uh, if there ain't anybody out there, I'm uh, ashamed to testify that uh, uh, one of these who days, uh, uh, those who are dead uh, will rise again. Uh, and we will Jesus forevermore. She says all is well. And the reason she can say all is well is because God made her a promise. And I come to tell you on today, there is no promise made by God that he cannot keep. And because Lazarus was raised from the dead, she too will experience a resurrection. And if you believe in Jesus Christ, when you transition from this life to the next, you too will experience a resurrection. And it's all because God has made us a promise. As our funeral directors come at this time, that's a promise that he has made to all men. You've got to believe and hold true to the promise of God even when you find yourself going through. As we prepare to leave this place on today, Jesus says this, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. Because in my Father's house, Jesus said there are many, many mansions. Matter of fact, he says, if it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am, ye may be also. Thomas said, Lord, how shall we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me.
just standing before the king. Oh, I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see. Face is before me. I can only imagine. I can only imagine to be surrounded by your glory. What we. Standing in the sun, I can hold.